open source is more a part of Cisco's DNA than I think most people realize. And it's really interesting because you think of an organization, or a community member thinks of an organization like Cisco, and why would you open source? That means you're just giving things away for free. And it's clearly not that simple. It's much more nuanced than that, like everything is. And I'm really excited to have the two of you here to talk a bit more about not just what Cisco's history and legacy is with open source, but really the advances and things that we're doing today. So would you mind kind of, both of you, kind of giving us a bit of an intro to what role Cisco is playing in the open source world and in specifically things like cloud native? Um, it, it's interesting. As you mentioned, Cisco is definitely heavily involved with open source. I don't think that's widely known. Um, but we have a new OSPO office, so that's the um, open source program office. So now we've got a whole group of people who are organizing how we open source, how things, how the repos look when they go out in the world, making sure they have good documentation and um, licensing and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, it's it's a pretty big deal. It's fantastic. Yeah, and having an OSPO office is for governance because a lot of times when you put out the software out there. There are legalities, there are legal issues, what you are, you have to be careful with licensing. Mm -hmm. So having an OSPO office, which is something brand new for Cisco, um, we have open sourced many projects before, but we haven't had an OSPO office. So we are trying to make strategic moves in open source with OS OSPO office mm -hmm. to do this. I, I really appreciate the intentionality behind a company like Cisco building that office. Uh, the governance, obviously, I can imagine, is one key component of that. Um, I have to admit, I have to kind of think though out loud that other components to having that sort of organization and that thought process for how we go about open source, it has to be about more than simply the, the good work of just open sourcing things. There's probably larger goals that Cisco's uh, working towards, not not just for our products. I mean, we're a company, so they want to. There's a bit of self-serving nature there, I'm sure too. But also, there's got to be something much more than that because Cisco doesn't. Organizations like Cisco as well don't just get into this because it helps enhance our products. What are some of the key benefits of Cisco getting involved more intentionally with open source? Sure. So one thing is it's a strategic move for organizations. It's going to accelerate product innovation because you are getting traction from a lot of larger community. It is the the ideas are not just bound to the company. You have contributors from outside. And also it's a part of giving back. You, we have, every software uses so much open source. It's almost a responsibility that we have to look upon and see what can we be, give back to the community. So that's a big thing. That's the, another reason why companies have to invest in open source and to accelerate product innovation. It's definitely a, a mind shift um, from a company just owning all of their own information and software and working on it in-house and never sharing that with the world except for the product itself. But now you start to think about software that anybody can work on and people can collaborate across the world and it brings so much diversity of thought and it really just sort of makes sense because now if you can build a community around what you're doing, you're, you're gaining from that knowledge, you're gaining from um, just a bunch of people coming at things from different angles, so it, it's really powerful. So I have to, I, I, I wasn't planning on thinking about it this way, but I'm really glad both of you said the word community, mm -hmm. and not that I want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but I really did want to touch on it, because we're, so we're here at Cisco Live US, and we're in the DevNet zone, which is where I love working, and the thing that I can see looking out, no one on camera can see this, but looking out is all the folks in classrooms and workshops, the theater right here next to us, and it's these people. Like the reason that we, yeah. any of us here at Cisco Live or the DevNet Zone or anywhere is community. Community is the thing. Like, mm -hmm. yes, we, we talk about it oftentimes in the context of a customer or a partner, but at the end of the day, it's made up of a bunch of people. And the reason that I'm imagining or envisioning that a lot of OSS, the OSPO office, exist is be, to serve community needs. How, mm -hmm. how do you envision what we're trying to, what, not, beyond just the simple, and not that it's simple, but the simple give back okay. opportunity, what are we really trying to empower our community to, to be able to do by sharing more of this knowledge? Uh, again, I'll go first with this. Uh, it's about putting the Cisco's technology, cloud native technologies into the hands of the community. It's their first hand chance to go look at what Cisco is developing in, in this case. But it is not just bound to Cisco, it is Cisco's partners, customers, are putting out our technology out there to see and then extend, bring their intelligence. So it's going to be a collective, collaborative development. And that's where the product innovation is. It's no longer about one entity trying to develop something. It's about what is required by the community, what is being adopted. Mm -hmm. And that feedback is coming through working with the community. It's not all altruistic, right? I mean, at the end of the day, a company needs to make money. Um, but one of the things about 
how Cisco does it. They're, they have these offerings that's open source. Anybody can go and collaborate, like we mentioned. But then they build a product around it that's it has more features, has support, is a commercial grade. So you can kind of get your feet wet, try it out, maybe start collaborating and thinking about it, and then we've got something strong and powerful that, mm -hmm. that's built on top of that. That's really cool. Yeah. So you've also mentioned the cloud native aspect of this a little bit. Would you mind, would both of you mind touching a little bit on how how it specifically um, connects with the concept of cloud native? Our customers and community members are thinking about the idea of moving to the cloud, which I think is a whole other conversation. It's a bit, it's a, it's a bit of a misnomer, I honestly think, but the, the hybrid nature of working with cloud-based services along with the things that are on-premises is, I think, where most companies will end up. How is this aiding in that process for businesses? Well, cloud-native security is really important because, as you mentioned, you've got on-prem, you've got hybrid, then you've got the cloud. There's certain things that are difficult to move to the cloud because the data is so important. It has to be protected and obviously, like your financial or um, medical information or things like that. So the cloud native um, security, it's actually trying to make sure that the cloud environment is a safe place to be able to, to bring all of the applications. Because I think eventually, everything's going to be up in the cloud, right? The cloud. So one other thing that the companies have to invest in open source, like Cisco, everyone else is on the open source bandwagon is to avoid the vendor lock-in. It is an attestation for our customers and partners that the products and solutions that we are developing are widely adopted. So suddenly, if you want to stop investing in this product, you are not lost because you are logged into this vendor. You have a whole community backing you. That's a big deal. That's the reason why you need to have open source investment, a foot into the open source investment. This is beyond the giving back to the community mm -hmm. question that you were asking earlier. That's fantastic. I really appreciate hearing that too. Uh, just kind of tie a bow on it. If I'm understanding what both of you are saying well is that this kind of turns the idea of community driven or community supported that so many people in IT networking have thought about for so long, which is mm. I go to a place and oh, there's no official support. There's just a community. I hope I can find an answer. This, yes, and it's a lot more than that. It's yes. substantially more than simply I put something out here, here's a forum, if you have questions, go ask, and best of luck to you. It's, it, this is an intentionality, and it's something substantially bigger than that that's meant to have a wider impact beyond just, I just gave you a project like on GitHub, and here's, you can go talk to right. some folks. Absolutely, you can't just take a project and throw it over the wall and just say, hey, good luck with that. Um, I, I hope it works out for you. I, it's got the power of Cisco behind it, and we're, we're gonna be there. We're gonna keep on driving things, and we, we would love for people to get involved. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you both so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.